the title of the message is Prophetic Warning Against Necromans. Prophetic Warning Against Necromans. Prophetic Warning Against What? Necromans. There is a prophetic message that I gave. The message caused me to receive a lot of insults on the internet. I don't mind being insulted for what God has sent me to, to do. But what I know is that when God has sent someone, see, whatever is spoken will always come to pass because God is not a respecter of persons. Some of the people were insulting me on the internet. They were saying, I don't have spirituality which can be compared to so and so. In any case, the Bible does not allow Christians to compare themselves to each other. We are not allowed. No, even if God were to anoint me to go and resurrect a person who died 100 years ago, I'm not allowed by scripture to compare myself to a fellow Christian. Even if God were to anoint me to create a person, let us assume God in his infinite wisdom. He comes to me in a dream or in a vision, and he gives me an anointing as a sign to cause me to be a sign in my generation that people must come to a life-saving knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. And then he causes me to do strange and very unique miracles. It doesn't make me to be ranked higher than other Christians. It's unscriptural to do that. that. We are all servants in the kingdom of God. The fact that God shows me a lot of revelations, it doesn't mean that I'm more elevated than those who don't see revelations. It just means one thing, that God has decided to use me. It doesn't say anything about me being special or anything. It's just God who would have decided in his infinite love and wisdom to just pick me as an opportunity and begin to use me as a tool in his hand. As a tool in his what? In his hand. So why am I speaking like this? I'm speaking like this because I released a message about the preservation of the body of a certain man of God who departed recently. Now, this man of God has been preserved where we were warning that he shouldn't be preserved. And what we are beginning to witness is acts of necromance. People are kneeling in front of his grave, talking to his grave, praying, as if his grave is a church altar of some sort. Now, why am I speaking like that? How is it a prophet? I saw people preparing to go to that place from all over the world to do acts of worship at the grave there. And those who don't believe the messages that we speak, you will see very soon there will be testimonies that they will post of spiritual experiences which will be taking place at that grave. And this thing, according to the Spirit of God, it will be a snare to many people, including church leaders. Including church leaders. It is a sin to kneel in front of a grave and do an act of worship. I will repeat, it is a sin to kneel in front of a grave, even to pray and meditate in front of a grave. It is a sin. If a Christian goes to a grave of another Christian to pray, to meditate, or to kneel, or to do any act of worship, which ought to be done elsewhere, and they do it in front of a grave, I repeat by the Spirit of God, it is a sin. And God keeps showing me in a vision. All sorts of spiritual experiences taking place. But guess what? People be connecting to all sorts of evil spirits in there. Am I saying this church has got evil spirits? No, I'm not saying the church has got evil spirits. But what I'm simply saying by the Spirit of God is that a doorway has been opened for evil spirits to start to be active. And Christians who are serious about their relationship with God and who are serious about their salvation, if ever they feel the need or the desire to visit that place of worship, they must be careful about 
go into that grave. That's the prophetic warning that the Spirit of the Living God gave me. If ever you feel the need to go and see the grave, just go and see the grave. Don't do anything to the grave. Go and see it like you see other graves. Don't all of a sudden think there is anything special about that grave. I know the grave might look, look special physically. But according to what the Spirit of the Living God told me, for those who will think, who will think it is necessary for them to visit that grave, the Spirit of God told me in the prayer closet to give a warning that this need to do acts of worship there, it will be very strong. And evil spirits will be very active. Because a lot of people, they subscribe to all sorts of false doctrines. You will be in the company of people who start to experience all sorts of things. And you will feel a compulsion to need, to own whatever will be manifesting there. And before you know it, you will be opening your life to demonic activity. This is a warning that God said, I must send out to the world. I know for giving this warning, some people... They will persecute me thinking I'm against a minister. No, I'm not against a minister. I am against deception. Christians should not talk to dead persons. It doesn't matter whether the dead person is an apostle or was an apostle, in fact. Or the dead person was an archbishop. Or the dead person was a prophet. The person is sleeping, waiting for resurrection. Don't talk to a dead person. If you don't want trouble in your life, never communicate or address, address a dead person as if he or she is alive. This is what the Spirit of God has told me. The moment you do that, says the Spirit of the Living God, you are opening yourself up for demonic activity. Don't cry tomorrow. When your life is upside down and things are not moving in your life, when your salvation is just mixed up and you don't know whether you are moving or going in your relationship with God. And when you have got all sorts of demonic experiences afterwards, which point to bondage. So I am speaking vehemently like this because God keeps showing me people kneeling in front of that grave. God keeps showing me some people are literally sleeping on that grave, meditating, soaking in that, on, on that grave. And I'm asking the spirit of the living God, but I want them and they didn't listen. What should I do? God says, don't give up. Warn. There are some of the elect who will feel an impetus to go there. I, I don't want these chosen ones to defile themselves, to defile their bodies, to kneel in front of a grave, to do acts of worship in front of a grave, to pray or to communicate in front of a grave. There are many places where you can go and pray, and the grave is not one of the places, says the Spirit of the Living God. Many people, demons, evil spirits, are waiting for them. They are waiting for them. And evil spirits have got lots of supernatural experiences to give, as I said during my sermon. They've, for people who are just hungry for supernatural experiences and who don't pay due regard to the principles of the word of God, evil spirits have got lots of supernatural experiences to give. Am I saying supernatural experiences are from evil spirits? Not all of them, but remember when Moses went back to Egypt to free the people of Israel when God sent him. It's not only him who threw his rod to become a snake. Even the Egyptian wizards, Jean and Jambres, they threw their rods and they became snakes. Do you think the devil or his demons, which were able to perform those strange signs and wonders, they have now died? Those evil spirits are still alive even up to this day. Deceiving saints who don't want to listen to the word of God when they are given warnings. We warn you by the word of the Almighty God. We warn you by the spirit of the Almighty God. If you feel a need to visit that church, just visit that church and fellowship with them. Don't participate in acts of necromance. If you are taken on a tour to just see the grave and others are doing acts of worship, 
don't do anything. Just look at the grave. Like you look at other graves. Don't treat the grave like it's a special thing. It is a grave like any other grave. That man is waiting for resurrection. Like all the people who have passed on who are waiting for resurrection. I will stop there. We thank you, Lord. I release every mighty blessing.